Finally, with IR, we look at the shape of the signals. Why are some signals broad, like this one here, and some signals narrow and sharp? Consider an OH stretch characteristic of an alcohol. That's the stretch between the oxygen atom and the hydrogen atom. But consider also that if there are other alcohol molecules nearby, this hydrogen can be involved in a hydrogen bond. It can be donating a hydrogen bond to this molecule. And the closer these two molecules are together, the greater the strength of the hydrogen bonding interaction. And a greater hydrogen bonding interaction reduces the strength of the OH bond. It reduces F. Now, the signal you see isn't from a single molecule. Rather, it's a huge number, trillions and trillions of molecules in your sample. And they are all involved to one degree or another with other molecules via hydrogen bonds. So what you're really seeing is a bunch of low intensity signals that are very close together but at different wave numbers. And what it presents as is a signal broad, a, si a single broad signal. However, if you happen to have a very dilute solution of an alcohol in a solvent that doesn't participate in hydrogen bonding, you'll see a narrow OH signal. Under certain conditions, it's possible to see the OH stretches from molecules that are participating in hydrogen bonding and some OH stretches from molecules that are not. This is in intermediate concentrations, intermediate to low concentrations in a solvent that doesn't do hydrogen bonding. A small number of the molecules are not hydrogen bonding with other molecules in the sample. So you see this free OH stretch, but then this is the broadened OH stretch. The broadened OH stretch shows up at a lower wave number because participating in the hydrogen bond reduces the force constant. In a carboxylic acid, there should be an OH stretch. But now, the carboxylic acid molecules can dimerize with one of them acting as a hydrogen bond donor to the carbonyl on the other. So it makes this nice little cyclic dimer. Consequently, both the OH stretch and the carbonyl stretch are brought in severely. And you see this feature that almost looks like a pimple on top of a mountain. The mountain is that broadened OH stretch, and the pimple is the sp3ch stretch. And those two signals are just on top of each other. Alcohols are not the only compounds that participate in hydrogen bonds. Amines can also do hydrogen bonding. See this broad signal here, centered at about 3300 wave numbers? That's for a primary amine. Excuse me, a secondary amine. It gives you one signal. and that is the stretch between the N and the H. In a primary amine, where the nitrogen is bonded to two hydrogens, we see two NH stretches. So you'd probably assume that one of these corresponds to one of these peaks, and the other one corresponds to the other peak. That's actually not quite right. It's actually that one of the peaks corresponds to the symmetric stretch. And the symmetric stretch is the more intense one because that's a bigger change in dipole moment. So that's when both bonds are lengthening and shortening at the same time. The asymmetric stretch, on the other hand, one bond is lengthening at the same time the other bond is shortening, that's a smaller change in dipole moment. 
That's that signal. Note also the intensity of the amine NH stretch. We're only getting about 60% transmittance. As opposed with an alcohol, the transmittance would be down at like 10%, maybe 20%. The reason an alcohol is so much more intense is because an OH bond is much more polar than an NH bond. You can go back to your general chemistry class. The electronegativity of a nitrogen is 3.0 and a hydrogen is 2.1. Here the difference is 0 0.9, whereas oxygen is 3.5 with hydrogens 2.1. The difference there is 1.4. So an OH stretch is more polar. Therefore, more intense.